Given the prevailing soft market, in your view, what will it take for the market to harden? Does it require a loss of, uh, on the scale of 9-11? Uh, or do you believe that there are steps which could be taken to enable a correction, if you will, uh, in rates? Um, is, it, is there something specific, practical steps that could be taken? I think the, um, it's recognised that globally reinsurance pricing is depressed. It's um, a function of significant capacity uh, from various sources. It's, uh, there's no foreseeable catalyst um, to increasing the rates or, or hardening in the market in the short term. Um, I think uh, it's almost impossible to envisage a single event that could lead to it. So um, an event driven or a sequence of events really is probably what could drive the market. It would have to be a sequence of events, multiple events uh, during a, a single year um, a, a, with the surplus of capacity and the, and the reinsurance underlying results. There probably isn't an insured, single insured event large enough to actually drive the market. So a, a series of events could probably drive it. With regard to a practical or technical steps that could be taken, <coughs> um, you're speaking about uh, catastrophe capacity, it really is a demand and supply uh, based um, purchase and there is significant supply of capital, um, large Investor, investor groups are looking to get better returns than they can in the, in the conventional market and reinsurance is actually offering above, above market returns so it remains an, um, a, an appealing investment. So um, in the face of such supply it's unlikely that you're going to be able to, that it's unlikely to, be able to um, take a market stance to, to, increase, uh, to increase the rate. So the, it's not likely that you're going to be able to do a an industry or a um, a corporate intervention. It really has to be driven. It probably will be driven by supply and demand, and that will be driven by events and losses. Um, so we've seen this year uh, on the continent mm. uh, the impact of Ebola, which you know this time last year when we were doing our forecasts mm. and outlook for the year, mm. no one was anticipating or predicting. Mm. Um, if you could single out uh, an unanticipated risk or perhaps an under-emphasized risk mm. for South Africa, uh, what would, that, what would mm. that be? I think um, it's, um, it w it's something that is unanticipated that is actually upon us already. And uh, what, I, what I'm thinking of really is the, um, the power crisis in South Africa. Um, the Eskom coming clean on exactly what their situation is and, um, and what that looks like in the medium term. Um, we're going to, we run the risk of a series of um, claims from insureds for um, power supply um, interruption um, and how the markets, res how our insurers policies respond to that um, and how that then aggregates into reinsurance claims uh, could be significant. It is possible that uh, a number of uh, most direct insurance policies will cover losses associated with an interruption of, of power. But on the scale that we're looking at, if we are looking at weekly weekly blackouts, uh, you know, um, insurers in the reinsurance market probably does not have a handle on the extent of these uh, of of the losses that can be aggregated into catastrophe losses. So that would be the one thing I would say. So it's not, it was unanticipated in, at the end of December, it's now upon us, but, but the, the impact is not fully understood and that would be, could be a significant loss driver and require, um, require some remediation in our 